Hi, this is a re-upload of my debate with Vosh, where I convince him to become an anarchist liberal. Enjoy. Yo, Trevkin! Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, hello. Excellent. What's up? I'm just going to mute you on here, hold on. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. You actually have a decent microphone. This is a, uh, this is an unprecedented event. Okay, good, good. Um, so, what I mean by pure socialism is market socialism. Markets. Uh, the kind that you advocate for. The kind that I kind of advocate for as well, but I think that it isn't relevant in most, in, in a lot of situations. Right so it is, it, it would work just in really want you to think. public services. Um, just the housing, things where people use it themselves a lot more. What specific production. what specific economic policies that I've advocated for do you take issue with? Not a lot really, other than what? your conclusion that we need to end up with kind of oh, just shit. market socialism rather than a mixed Tim economy. So what I would advocate for Are is around about 30% market socialism, 33% state socialism. About thirty-three percent regulated capitalism. Wait, keep cap to keep capitalism sandboxed. The you know, uh, socialist. Um. So, if you if you dis so, so, if you disagree with me on the issue of um, if you disagree with me on the issue of like um, market socialism, sorry. um. I feel like we're going to disagree on most of our economic prescriptions then. No, oh, I actually do. I, I actually, I'm, I'd consider myself mostly a market socialist, in fact. But I can see its limitations, like, you, you know, a SWOT analysis where you do the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. What, that quite what, a lot what weaknesses socialism. do you think a market so it, socialist... Weakness, its main weaknesses are it, that it incentivizes Luddism, you know, Luddites, the people in that, what way? In, that didn't want technological progress. You know, like people um, and unions do it as well, and you know, where they don't want people to take their jobs, like the people can. Wait, wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so your from technology. So, so, so it both. Wait, so your, so your. So well, let's go one at a time. So, so that it both with, increase costs, consumers, and holds back technology, which is fair enough sometimes because you know that you. Uh, I think that in, uh, in some things with production, can hold uh, production back too much. Right. Okay. So let's let's take these one at a time because I hit it one point at a time. So the first thing that you said is that a weakness of market socialism is that it encourages luddites. So people like essentially people who would resist automation. Not not, not luddites is in an insult, but luddism, like resistance towards technology and more towards human labor. Um, in what way is that the case? Do you think it prefers human labor? So, for example. Yeah. Um, there were strikes in the UK where I live against uh, train conductors losing their jobs towards massive doors that closed. To wait, check or to wait, 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 wait. But those strikes were from unions. They were not from yeah. Uh, yeah. worker okay, cooperatives. Okay, so, so, so yeah, so so there's also so unions do that as well, but also worker cooperatives could do it. And this is this is the killer. This is where I think market socialism really could work if it somehow was able to manage to harness the wisdom of the crowds. Uh, the wisdom of crowds effect a book written about it without falling for our rule and, oh, right, uh, right, okay but i want to specifically address the claim that market socialist society would prevent the um automization and technological advancement i think it would necessarily but it's prone to it wait wait, 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 wait. okay wait, wait, wait but the, okay but that's the claim that i'm contesting if you want to say it's prone to it then that is the claim that i would contest as well um so with a worker cooperative um, if, it, like, the people there would only benefit from the automization of their workplace, would they not? If, like, if 10 people collectively own a firm, and they all work Depends 40 on... hours a day, and if the automization yeah. means that they could maintain either the same wages or get greater exactly. wages... It, it depends on how it's structured, not really. What, what I see as the better solution is to have higher safety hours. net, which, which increases the, um bargaining power of all workers so that if a job does become redundant and they can retrain easily 
Okay, I, wait, I don't have an issue with that, but I, but I do take issue with the idea that worker cooperatives will necessarily oppose um, certain forms of automization or, in, like, industrial advancement. Um, because the reason why unions strike against that sort of stuff is because they know that if the job is automated, they'll all be fired. They don't have control over that. Unions yeah, and I understand them. workers do need to have their rights um, represented, but I just don't want them to... About technology too much. Wait, but they but they wouldn't. I'm contesting that claim. I don't think they would do that at all, because in the case of a worker cooperative society, they benefit from the autom uh, the automation of their firm. And that's my point. The closer they are to the to the to, um, consuming the product they're producing, the less you have an issue with it. Um, but for example, if if you imagine um, the world was made up of giant cooperatives. Um, that that could very easily turn into like cartels and things like that. And, well, wait, wait, wait. Know. Any type of firm can turn into a cartel. I don't know if them being a cooperative necessarily makes them more inclined. Exactly. To that. So they would still need a kind of liberal regulation um, to stop those but, kind of practices. Wait, but well, I agree with regulating business. But what what contention have we levied against market socialism so far? Because I, th I think a lot of people think that it would be completely uh, self-organizing and it would be like a utopia. I think that really you would still need a lot of liberal regulation. And I, think I don't know what you mean by liberal regulation, but I'm wait. I'm not a market a socialist society. Yeah, a market socialist society has a state with elected representatives. Yeah, or I guess it could be direct democracy if you wanted. But there would yeah, there would still be a central government. I'm not opposing that. If we want to talk about something more radical, that would be like anarcho syndicalism. But that's not what I'm defending here. Market socialism would still, yeah, absolutely, it would be heavily regulated, yeah. Well, but being as it's Marx's uh, birthday, I would also say that Marx was, Marx missed the biggest contradiction. That was the contradiction between consumers and producers. He he kind of extorted it, or he, he framed it a little bit wrong between, like, oppressed and oppressor. Wait, really, how? there is always a contradiction between the interests of people who consume things, who want things better, cheaper, faster versus people who produce them, who want to get the most profit for doing the, the least effort. Uh, that I'm, contradiction wait, will always what, remain. What, is, what belief did he have which you believe is inaccurate? Well, he, he obsessed over the other contradictions within capitalism. I think that he he, he missed that fundamental... Well, he, he misinterpreted it in the sense that there will always be that contradiction, and contradictions what, can't be solved by contradiction? definition can only be alleviated, only problems can be solved. Well, yeah, I mean, Marx railed against contradictions inherent to the framework of capitalism, but what contradiction did he did he miss? Miss the, the fact that there will always be that, con that contradiction between producers and consumers, and he, he put producers, mixed them up within capitalists and workers, and really they're both producers. I'm I'm not sure if this is a dichotomy that he would have ignored. I haven't. Um... But because he didn't really live in a consumer society where everyone else was just as much a consumer as a producer. Well, he, he I mean, in a, he wrote in, in, in much more of a feudal society where it made sense that it was much more of an oppressed and an oppressor class. Well, he now it's a lot more. It's, well, it's still an oppressed and an oppressor class. It's still the bourgeois so and the proletariat. Not so much, and I do find that that that. Wait, wait, really what, wait, wait. What do you mean, not so much? Because nowadays, you could be, you know, you can, you started your own business, you know, you, you, you can do it very easily, the, the, gap, the gap between... Wait, whoa, 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 wait, wait, you can't just, yeah. you can't just start your own business, and just becoming, like, a little, like, corner okay, shop yeah, owner does not make... Wait, 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 you've been talking a lot, so let's actually stick to a point. So, yes... Um, while it is true that there is no law preventing you from starting a business, the line between the bourgeois and the proletariat is as defined now as it was back then. Um, you can't just, like, start a business and then become, like, a telecom giant. You can't just start a business and become, like, a, like the CEO of a massive tech company. Fundamentally, uh, the line isn't between, like everybody who's ever had an employee and the workers it's a very like the upper echelon of of, yeah. of capital owners who yeah and i would really agree with your video the other day i don't think that it's really what's happened is the gap between rich and poor has got wider but really there's so much more people in the middle that it's harder to draw that distinction nowadays between just an oppressor you know what i mean it's been stretched out that was a really good demonstration. I mean, if you if you believe that like wait, selling your like labor to a capitalist is like you know uh, 
d destructive in s some form or another, like it's like it's immoral. I then yeah, really like that that relationship is still very much. I don't present. really though, because because that's the other contradiction that I that I see that, that he missed. I mean, like if I had a hobby and I turn that into a small business, then I hire some. It's, it's the the argument we had with uh, Sargon. I think he had a point there. Wait, you can't really justify socializing someone's business until. We we have, you realize we've gone over so many points. If we could just stick to one, so we can we can stick on this one. You don't think it's moral to socialize a business, like to 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 expropriate no. the the wealth no, of a capitalist? I think capital I think it could be authoritarian if it's taken to extremes. That kind of thinking. Sure, but okay. So, how would you feel about a law, which, when put in practice, takes uh, businesses of a certain size and says, okay. Over the next 20 years, or no, let's shorten it. Over the next year, we are going, we expect you to sell off all of your capital assets to those who work at this firm. Um, you will be like recompensed for a portion of this by the government. Do you think that this is a, um, do, you, do you think this is a, um, like, like an immoral act? No, no. And, and I think you were right in, in the, in the, and, and, and he couldn't say anything when you said that you could issue, um, uh, shares in the company in lieu of paying taxes that wouldn't be authoritarian and I agree with you there with a large company that would be true I think that because okay, so, the so, so there's is nothing so inherently simplistic. wrong there's nothing inherently no, I, wrong though. no and that's 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 what I would agree with I would like a lot more socialism like that actually and, yeah and workers, okay so yeah, yeah why don't we get why don't we get like rid that. of the private ownership of all capital and just try to you know uh, improve society by putting power in the hands of the common people i think we should try and do that as much as possible but just going on the narrative of oppressed and oppressor can create a narrative that um just allows people to fall into kind of just hatred rather than hope you know i mean rather than do my like being just identifying your oppressor can cause you to hate your oppressor yeah, yeah well yeah yeah i'm talking about cap kind of you know communists kind of thing really basically Doom a class reduction right. so I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with being antagonistic towards people who are responsible for controlling society and doing stuff yeah. that you I think, think it is depends wrong. on the situation. It depends on how tyrannical the society is. Sometimes we can be a bit a little bit hyperbolic. Things are. So do you then agree with market socialism broadly? Yeah, I do. Like I said, uh, my utopia would be about 33% mix of each. I don't, I don't know what that, state don't know socialism. What that means. So state socialism, meaning like public services, um, a good selection of housing that's um, that's, that's socialized, but also 33% um, market socialism and 33% regulated capitalism. So why, that way why you'd, keep have, the you'd, you'd raise the bargaining power of all workers and also raise the bargaining power of consumers. Well, why um, why keep the capitalist ownership? Why keep private ownership at all? Because I do actually think that competition brings innovation and choice. But market, it's, market, just, it's just massively overblown. Well, market socialism still has competition, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? And that, that's why 33% market socialism as well. But why keep the capitalist then? Because I think that ultimately, you know, if you want uh, in an egalitarian society that's free, where people are free to do what they want, what it would be authoritarian to ban them from setting up an enterprise with that structure? Do you think it's Surely authoritarian it to, to keep out people from owning them? slaves? No, I don't actually think that we're going to achieve socialism until socialism outcompetes capitalism, to be honest. I think but wait, wait, but you needs. didn't answer my question. Do you think it's authoritarian to keep people from um, from owning slaves? Course. Okay. Well, then... no, to to stop them from owning slaves. No, of course yeah. Not. So it's authoritarian to stop people from owning slaves. Of course not. Yeah, but I don't see the worker worker employee relationship as being that of being anywhere comparable to slavery, unless you're talking about a really, really purely capitalist society. Well, it's demonstrable that worker cooperatives have better oh. working environments than traditionally owned firms. Yeah. Yeah, right. I think that yeah, the closest to socialism you get, but you're right. It does get more egalitarian for workers. Yeah, so um, why keep But for camp? example, if, if if we lived in total, I know you don't advocate for this, but if we lived in totalitarian Russia, 
example, I would probably um, see a good case for fighting for more economic freedom. And, and that's because I think the markets are emergent, not really... Um, not something that we that, that our leftists think that, um, that are created by, by humans. They're literally, when, when something is valued more than something else, there's, there's a market for it, it emerges, like the illegal drugs market. The only thing we can do is direct markets to work for us. Yeah, but market socialism still has markets. So I guess I'm just asking yeah, yeah, exactly. what, yeah, what yeah. benefit I'm just, I'm just reinforcing is... reinforcing why I'm a market socialist rather than... Right, so what benefit is provided by keeping around traditionally owned firms? Um, I think really maybe it would just be a transitional stage. If, if, if um, market socialism is as efficient as it, if it's, as, as you say, and, and we, you know, we can make it out to be, harnessing the wisdom of the crowds and like that, we should fully outcompete it. So it's more of like a holding period for you, like if we can demonstrate that market socialism is better. I think if, if that if that was the aim, you could probably convince a lot of capitalists to get on board as well. Well, they I mean they would they would never they would never get behind them because they would have their... no because they they would think that that socialism wouldn't be competitive. But I think we actually could make socialism competitive harnessing the wisdom of the crowds. Like well, I'm said. sure we can make socialism competitive, but capitalists would never get behind it because it would mean expropriating their businesses. Yeah, and also banks as well. Yeah, we need to socialize banks, make pu banks public as well. Like you said, you, you pointed to that to me as well. Banks have a vested interest in stopping socialism because a lot of them, their sister companies, invested in the stock market, so don't want the rest of the enterprises to turn into yeah, we need to also have a mixed economy with the banking system. I take it you're uh, not a big fan of uh, violent revolution? Not unless the government becomes too tyrannical. All right. But, uh, even, but even then, I wouldn't want the communists in charge. I would want someone that, that wants to plan something similar as what we've got. But better. Embedded liberalism. That's what I would want. Gotcha. All right. Um, I'm probably because this game isn't vibing with me right now. I'm probably going to play some Outlast. Um, so I love you. Do you want to hit us with the final meme before I do that? No, no, keep up your good work. Um, I hope um, that's maybe the radicalized a few people because I was all on board with full market socialism until um, I really thought about it. Did a proper SWOT analysis. Um, Wait, did I did I de-radicalize you from socialism? My advocacy was was poor. Um, no, no, you radical re-radicalized me a little bit actually. After I saw you um, going against the Bernie or Bush guys, and I was like, oh, oh, gotcha. okay, yeah. the dirtbags aren't that bad after all. Uh, if, as long as I am known for those arguments, I guess. Um, all right, here we go. <laughs> Outlast. All right, thank you very much for the memes. I appreciate it and uh, enjoy the incrementalism for the win or her jump scares, I guess. Right, be well. Right. I have no fucking idea what that conversation was. I have no clue.